he will be one of you. He is a blue-collar guy. He wants to win. He will do everything he can to try to turn that franchise around. Great pass catcher, basketball background, athletic. He's got great length, tremendous catch radius. He will be a real factor. 6'4", 270. He sets a physical edge in the run game. Violent hands. Impacts the quarterback in the pass game. With a first pick in the DML draft, the Houston Texans select. Yo, what's going on, fellas? We back with another mock draft edition. And we're here with the DML 2021 cycle, man. Um, we're going to provide you guys with some 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 intel about where we think these high caliber players will go um between picks one and pick ten but before i get into that i want to introduce my counterpart ray mcshay how's it going man what's going on bus it's the first uh, draft show of a cycle baby let's get it popping yep so uh, we might as well just dive into it man we're not gonna keep you guys waiting um with the first overall pick of the new dml draft we got the pittsburgh Steelers. And as you see, me and Ray McShay agree on Jamal Rose being the first overall pick in the DML draft. Now, um, Jamal Rose won the Heisman, man. He's the best player in this draft class. Um, he comes out of Oklahoma, man, where you know they produce Tyler Murray, um, Jalen Hurts, Baker Mayfield. But I think Jamal Rose may be the best out of all three of those guys, man. Um, Ray. Tell me why you like Jamal here, and how does he compare to the previous quarterback that he's um, from Oklahoma? This is a perfect fit for Jamal. I feel bad for the kid because his career's already been wasted at this point, you know, going to Pittsburgh. But he is the best overall player in this draft. When you look at him top to bottom, from his combine, his age, all his attributes, this kid is a flat-out baller. I mean, when you win the Heisman at 22, 23 years old, and you come from a school that produces nothing but legit quarterback, like you said, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, and you're put above them, that speaks volumes, man, because you see them other dudes are already in the league balling. Yeah. So when you look at him, he was one or two in all the quarterbacks, and there were some good quarterbacks in this draft class. He was one or two in every category. I mean, this kid ran a 4 4 8 as a quarterback. Yeah, that's blazing. That, that, yeah, fast. that's blazing speed. That's faster than most of these running backs that are running, man. So when you put that with a dude that has A plus throw power, so that means you can run and you can pass. Come on, man. That's a no brainer. Yeah, that's, that, Jamal Rose would be, should be the first overall pick in the DML draft. Um, now, let's keep it moving, man. We're going to go to pick number two, and that's where we got the New York Giants coming in, and this is our first um, pick where we disagree. Now, um, the Giants could, personally, I think their team is kind of balanced, but um, there's been rumors that he was shopping um, Saquon Barkley. I'm not sure why, but um, even if he doesn't shop Saquon Barkley, I think he goes running back here and picks Eric Dotson out of Auburn. And the reason I feel that way is because if he keeps if he keeps Barkley, he's gonna need some insurance in case he kind of runs Barkley into the ground, man. So um, with Eric Dotson, this guy is the best running back in the draft, and he kind of reminds me of um, the running back from Auburn, Cadillac Williams, if you remember him, but just faster and more. Agile. That, that's just my opinion. Um, but he could go anywhere. Um, Eric Dawson ran like a, you know, he had the first, the highest 40 out of all the running backs at a 4.37. Now, he's even faster than Jamal Rose. So, um, Ray McShay, I got a going running back because I think he needs some insurance in case he trades Barkley or Barkley gets hurt. But you got him going wide receiver Solomon Irvin. I like Solomon Irvin. He was Jamal Rhodes, the number one overall pick's top target. Yeah. So what do you do, man? If you can't score points and you already have a premier running back and you really don't have that X-factor type receiver, go get you a receiver. I heard a lot of stuff about people talking about Daniel Jones, this and that, but when you don't have no one to throw the ball to, it's kind of hard to critique Daniel Jones. 
So Solomon Irvin has a lot of good attributes, and he's young. He's 22 years old. He ran a good combine at a 4-4-4. I mean, he was well-balanced throughout all his draft uh, combine scenarios, and he can catch. He has a lot of potential, and I know that he struggles to score points. I think he might have averaged 10 points a game he scored this season. I mean, it, it was no more than 13-14, but you got to score points because when you're in division with the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Washington football team, you got to be able to score. And you're picking the top five for a reason. Not because you play great defense, but because you couldn't score points, man. So, Salon Irving is a perfect pick, for, you know, right here. He has a lot of options. You know, he could go cornerback. He could go running back like like you pick, but I think he'll end up going receiver. Right. So, um, as you mentioned, man, I got him going running back. Ray McShay got him going wide receiver. But let's move on to pick three. And we got the Minnesota Vikings coming in with the third overall pick in the draft. And we disagree once again. Um, I'm a defensive. I'm a defensive guy, and I got the Vikings taking Jaden Williamson out of Arizona State. Now, this dude, I'm not going to say he's the best DT in this particular draft, but he could be a one A, one B. Uh, from Arizona State, man, this guy had a great combine. Um, he ran a 40 of 4.9, but he also did 38 reps on the bench. Now he did break his high school record as far as bench press. That may not be saying much coming from high school to collegiate and then not going to the NFL, but it just proves this guy is strong as an ox. And he's going to be able to move around uh, and, and throw, throw offensive linemen out of the way to stop the run and, and get to the quarterback, especially being in a division with the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears, man, where they, they like to run the ball and they pass the ball. So I think this guy right here could um, present some issues for the entire NFC North or NFC, whoever he plays. Um, Jaden will help Daniel Hunter um, get to the quarterback a little bit more where he may attract those double teams, man, so Hunter can get off. So the only the only downside to Jaden Williamson is sometimes he tends to take a few plays off. But I think the leadership down there in Minnesota will help him overcome those um, plays where he want to, you know, take a play off or take a two, take a two or three plays off. Now, you got the Vikings going Tyson McMullen to protect the blind side of Kirk Cousins. I don't know how long Kirk Cousins is going to be there, but if Tyson McMullen is there. He will have some protection. Great. I mean, when you watched the Vikings all last season, what did the Vikings do? Run, run, run. And that Vikings offensive line is long in the tooth. They got maybe one, maybe two young starters on that on that line. A lot of them guys are pretty pretty old, man. High cap numbers, you know, so those guys could be cap casualties. So when I look at it, go get the best left tackle out there, man. 21 years old. He won the Outland Trophy, which is the best lineman in college football at 21. I mean, the boy can bench press. He can move. I mean, he's an all-around offensive lineman. And when you're regarded as the best left tackle, what's the most important position on the O-line? Left tackle. So, I know I've seen this user in the past. He likes to get those big boys up front. So, why not go go, go get you the best left tackle out there? Yeah, man. Um, I, I like Tyson. And if he goes to Minnesota, I, I think Kirk Cousins will be happy. He doesn't have to worry about that blind side. He, he can get the ball to um, Thielen and, and Jefferson and, and hand it off to Cook without worrying about pressure coming from the backside. Now, um, we're going to move on down to, to the fourth overall pick in the DML draft. And we got the Jets coming in, man. Um, the Jets had a really disappointing season. Um, I think it was just dis- disappointing from the start. But, I mean, he held on, man, got a couple wins, held down the fourth overall spot. Now, he has a lot of holes, I think. But I think you take the best player available here. And he goes Marcus Samuels, man, from Utah, the Utah Utes. Um, Marcus Samuels is the fastest cornerback in this draft. Um, and if, if I'm not mistaken, he ran like, uh, what did he run? 429, I believe. 429. 429. Now, this could be the fastest time out of all the athletes that are coming into the DML. 429. As you remember, Eric Gordon ran a 437. 
So that's faster than Eric Dotson. I'm sorry. Marcus Samuels is that cornerback who can run with anybody who he lines up against. And he plays in a division where people like to pass. Um, he ran track in college and high school. And he played along, if you if you don't know, the the cornerback from the Bears, Jalen Johnson. So um, Jalen Johnson went to the Bears and came out early. But Marcus Samuels was actually the guy that people wanted. So being that he's able to come out this year, the Jets will not pass him up, and it will take Marcus Samuels as their first um, pick in the draft. Now, you got him going cornerback, but you got him taking the guy out of Boise State, Tyree Bramble. Why Bramble over Samuels? It's, it's neck and neck. It's 1A, 1B, man. And I look at the, the type of defense that the Jets like to run. And Bramble is six foot three, a buck 83. And when you look at it, that boy has everything you want. He can run. I think he ran a 4 4 4 at the, at the combine. He can press you. He's got great play rec, great awareness. I think he's going to be a ball hawk. You know, just because somebody is super fast doesn't mean they're going to be a good player and we've seen that a lot you saw the Raiders all those years go draft speed 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 and those dudes were not good so I look at the overall balance of Bramble and I see big corner Richard Sherman type build maybe a little bit faster and I think it's a home run pick for the Jets man yeah I mean I I, I think Tyree Bramble would be a good uh, player here Uh, he's going to bring some recognition to Boise State, because all I remember about Boise State is, is the blue field. Blue field. And and my man, um, what's oh man, what's my man name? The running back. Ian Johnson. No, not Ian Johnson, the guy who knocked the guy out from Oregon. Oh, you're, ta- you're, you're, you're talking about LeGarrette Blunt when he plays. LeGarrette him. Blunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I remember about Boise State, man. So Tyree Bramble being picked at the fourth overall pick, he will bring some recognition to Boise State. Now, Let's move on to the fifth overall pick, and that's the Las Vegas Raiders, you know. And here we disagree again. I go offense, you go defense. And we mentioned Solomon Irvin earlier going to the Giants, but I got him going to the Las Vegas Raiders to team up with Brooks. Now, we already know what Solomon Irvin can do. He was the go-to man for Jamal Rose, but... Not only that, not only is he fast, he's quick, he's agile, he runs some of the some of the crispest routes I've ever seen. But he broke all the CD Lamb's records from Oklahoma. So he's coming in to the DML ready to play with a chip on his shoulder, showing that he can play on any team. But you just gotta have somebody to give him the ball. Now this may be an issue with Las Vegas, because they had they got Mariota down there. I don't know. You know, if they're going to go free agency and find a better quarterback to get Solomon, Solomon Irvin and Ruggs the ball. But this will be a great tandem, man, because, you know, the Raiders just made a trade and they got they got Ruggs, um, they got Waller, and they got Ertz. So you add Solomon Irvin, that's four targets that you got to that you got to try to cover and it may take some of, some of the attention away from Ruggs to get him even better. So you got him going defense. You got him going taking the linebackers, Oscar Harris out of Alabama. And Oscar Harris might be the second best player in this draft. When you look at all the linebackers that are available in this draft, Oscar Harris was the fastest. He was the strongest, and he's 21. I mean, he's six foot three, 248, and comes from a. Uh, a tradition of great deep defensive players at Alabama. So I look at the Raiders. The Raiders gave up a lot of points. I think they gave up like 75 points or something like that to the Chiefs this season. Unless you're scoring 76, you're not winning that game. So when I look at what's available, cornerback would look great in, in Las Vegas, but it, d- it didn't fall right. They need a quarterback. Don't think they will reach that high. So go ahead and take the next best defender, which I believe Oscar Harris is. That boy's a beast. He ran a 4-4-8. As a linebacker at 6 foot 3, 248, man. Imagine that. That's like amazing for that type of an athlete to be that good and be sitting there waiting for a user that loves that type of player. Yeah. 
Oscar Harris is a, a, a great linebacker, and he comes from Alabama, so you know he you know he knows how to play. He knows defense. So, um, either either way the Raiders go, man, that they can produce with either Solomon Irvin or Oscar Harris helping that defense um, stop everybody from scoring. Now, next up, we got pick number pick number six, and that's the Carolina Panthers coming in. And um, this owner, we both know, um, <laughs> he, he, he he loves those those overhangs, those big bellies, and we both got him going O line. I just got him taking Tyson McMullen, and you got him taking Bradley Williams. Um, we, we mentioned McMullen earlier. Um, I think um, McMullen can, can protect. Bridgewater or um, Greer's blind side, whoever the quarterback is down there, and provide some um, some run blocking for um, McCaffrey. Now, um, Notre Dame had a down season, but the bright point of that team was Tyson McMullen. I mean, he was the go-to guy. He um, Sometimes he became uh, an eligible receiver and, and caught some touchdowns in the end zone. So they, they utilized his athleticism with his hands and everything, but only you know, despite him being one of the greatest bloggers in the NCAA. But you got him taking Bradley Bradley Williams from Penn State. Why why the guard here? When I look at the Panthers roster, they have two tackles. Their left tackle was a, was a rookie last year and their right tackle is still really good. They need the interior to play. When you got the division that you're in, I mean them Falcons the Falcons got a nasty defensive tackle boy, and he will run your guard smooth over almost every play. Trust me, I've seen it all season. That boy's a beast. So you need a guy that can block that type of player and be able to protect whatever quarterback you got better, whether it's Teddy, Greer, a free agent, a rookie, whatever, you got to be able to protect him from the inside. So I think he'll build those tackles Get him a nice guard. This guard is nasty, man. When you look at him, I mean, he might be the best interior offensive lineman in this draft. And this user loves this type of player, and he's 21. You know, guys like those younger players because they can last a lot longer in the league. And when I look at the user, I look at this type of player, it's a no-brainer pick for me that he'll end up taking this left guard. Right. So basically what you're saying is, um, the, the Panthers make this pick based on their division and, and facing guys like J.D. Garrett, J.D. Garrett and um, who, who else? What other DTs may be in that division? Vita Vea. Vita Vea. So this this particular you got, pick. You got a lot of de- good, good defensive linemen for the Saints. I mean, they right. There's a, that whole division's got really good D linemen. Right. So he's making this pick based on his division and what he needs to protect to protect his quarterback. Now, moving on with pick seven, we got the Colts coming in, and this is um, the second pick that me and you agree on, and you got the DN Kevin Watkins out of North Carolina State. Now, man, I can, I can go on all day about Kevin Watkins, man. He comes in at what, um, I think he's like 6'1", uh, let's see what he says, 6'1", 263. And he kind of reminds me, uh, he, he, he's a shorter version of Mario Williams, the former NC State, but I think he's a little quicker and a little stronger. So when you combine those those attributes with, you know, his his, his strength and his, um, his length, he can get to the quarterback with no issues, man. He keeps, he keeps the offensive guys' hands off of him and to get to the quarterback. Now, tell me why you like Kevin Watkins besides, you know, his speed and um, his finesse moves and, and, and him being compared to Mario Williams. Now, for everyone that doesn't know, this was a breaking news type deal that just happened not too long ago where the Indianapolis Colts actually traded this pit to the San Francisco 49ers. Oh yeah, man, I, I, San I, I, Francisco 49ers, man. I missed that. I missed my Twitter feed. So let me look. Okay, I see it right now. It just popped up. This trade, this pick has been traded. Gotcha. Okay. So, but I do believe that the Niners, who they've been willing and dealing, changing the whole um, look of their roster, that this player is a tweener. You gave a great comparison to Mario Williams. He's a lot shorter than Mario. Mario was like six seven. Yeah. But athletically, he's just as athletic, if not more. 
So there's been rumors that there might be a coaching change in San Francisco coming up soon where they might transition from a, a, a traditional 4-3 to a 3-4. So you can put this kid at defensive end. You can put this kid at outside linebacker, and he's going to flourish in either scheme. Right. And this user is a defensive user. It don't matter what team he has, what he's building, it's always defense. So this is the best defensive player left on the board, and that's going to be an area of need with some of those other guys getting along in the tooth. So Kevin Watkins was our pick for the Colts, and I think that's why the Niners wanted to move up to get a guy like that. Gotcha. Kevin Watkins will be the, the staple of the Niners defense. And I'm going to have to fire my media guy, man. He did not get that information over there to me. So um, anybody look, looking for some, some media work, please hit the plus up. Um, <laughs> let's, let's move on, man, to pick eight. And we got the Jacksonville Jaguars coming in. And we both got them going defense. But I got them taking the linebacker out of Alabama, man, Oscar Harris. And you mentioned before, to me, Oscar is like the Ray Lewis of, of the linebackers in this draft. You know, Ray Lewis could do it all, just like Oscar Harris. Now, the only downside to this, um, somebody, if, if you didn't watch, um, our crew put out a show a couple weeks ago, Numbers Don't Lie, and um, there was there was reports saying Oscar Harris had COVID-19. Um, I don't know if he's still in quarantine, but he has to get over this to even come to the draft show. But that does not take away from his talent and what he can do on the field. Once he get that test gun again and it comes out negative, he will be ready. And he will be ready to produce for the Jackson J- Jacksonville Jaguars. Now you team up him, you team him up with um uh what's my what's my man? Miles name? Jack. Miles Jack, um, Josh Allen, and I can't even pronounce the dude's name, the, the, the young rook from Chase, Chase on. On. I think it's Chase on Chase. from LSU. Those guys together will help him possibly win this division. So, Oscar Harris, please get healthy, man. Get on, get back out there on the field so you can help these Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey, you got them going linebacker too, but you got them taking Matt Reasoner. Why, why Matt Reasoner here from Virginia? Matt Reasoner, like I said early, earlier, is 1A, 1B with him and Oscar Harris. Yeah. You look at them, very comparable. Matt's also 21. He, he ran a tick slower than what Oscar Harris did. And he's six foot four, 252. That boy reminds me like Brian Erlacher, big, tall, physical type linebacker that can move in space. Right. And the Jags are looking for a linebacker. I know the Jags went and signed a nice veteran in Quan Alexander in free agency. So when you like, like you said, when you compare this type of a player with the young guys mixing with the veterans that he's piecing together, that Jaguars defense is nasty. And this user loves defense. It don't matter who he's playing with. It's going to be defense just like the, the Niners. So we both got him going linebacker. It just all depends on which one falls to him. And Matt Reasoner, Oscar has a 6'3". Matt yeah. Reasoner is a 6'4". 6'4". So, he ran a 4'5'5". Five, five. Yes. And he had 26 reps on the bench. So when you come out there, man, hey, with a book of that chin strap because he's trying to knock your head off. I like Matt Reason, man, just not over Oscar Harris. So let's move on to pick nine. And we got the Cincinnati Bengals coming in. Um, now, we both got him going defense. I got him taking your boy Tyree Bramble from Boise State. And we talked about him earlier, man. Um, and once again, he'll bring recognition to Boise State. So we just don't so we won't remember them as just having the blue field. Um, I think he will excel in Cincinnati um, I think you know bringing him down there and, and, and allow him to train with some of the veterans he'll bring that physical presence to the to the defensive side of the ball um, he, he's had some issues in the past you know on the collegiate level you know um, being late to meetings but you know once you get to the NFL you know the veterans would not be playing around with that so I hope they I hope somebody takes him under his wing get him on the right ship and he will help this Cincinnati Bengals defense. Now, you got him taking taking the DT out of Arizona State. Jaden Williamson, man. We can't say enough about him. We already say he's, he's strong as an ox. But Ray McShay, what else can you add to, to enhance Jaden Williamson's stock? It speaks for itself. Kid's 21. He's a big body in the middle of the field. 
like you said, he's super. He put up 38 reps at the combine and he ran a 4.9. I mean, that's a big dude running pretty fast and one of the top uh, bench press DTs or defensive linemen in general at a combine. Right. So when I look at the Bengals, they might be quote unquote deep at the defense tackle position, but they're old. You know, you look at Geno, long in the tooth. DJ Reader's kind of that mid 20s, gonna start creeping up to the tent that late 20s, you got to find that replacement for Geno. You got a nice young linebacking crew in Cincinnati. You got some good DBs. Go get you this guy to play in that 4-3 defense. Keep your linebackers clean and play some defense, man, because you got a good division. The Super Bowl champ Browns are in that division. Another top tier uh, team in the Ravens are in that division. You got to be able to stop those high-powered offenses. Go get you a big boy. This guy is a perfect fit for the Bengals, and it would be a steal if he was there at number nine. Yes. Um, like I said, man, defense, I think, is the way the Bengals need to go. Um, the, the DT provides, you know, pressure to the quarterback, and the cornerback will allow him to cover guys like Hollywood Brown and those, those fast cornerbacks that's out there in Baltimore. But, hey, let's move it on, man. And we here for the last pick, and this is the top ten, and we got the Atlanta Falcons coming in with pick ten. Now, um, I actually have them going um, defense. This is another Auburn guy. Man, this draft was, was, was filled up with Auburn and Oklahoma um, Sooners, man. Um, so, I got him taking Tavares Cole out of Auburn. Now, this guy is a... Man, I can't say enough about this guy, man. He's 6'6", 256. Had a combine grade of 7.1. Now... I don't have the Falcons keeping him at the linebacker spot. I actually got him moving to the DN. They recently, they recently let go of Tack, Tack McKenzie. So I got him taking Tavares over and moving him to DN. The reason why, I think he's a little on the slow side to play the linebacker spot, unless he's in the 3-4. But when you move him to the, to the, to the D-line, I mean, guy had 20, 27 reps. Great power move. So, um, Man, out of Auburn and playing in the SEC, he played he played tough, tough talk competition day in and day out. So, Tavares Colbert going to the Falcons and moving him to DN, I think they will help his defense out. And maybe he'll get to go up against a guy like Tyson McMullen or, or, or Bradley Williams when we have him going to the Panthers. Now, you got him going wide receiver to Kaysan Price from Penn State. Now, if he, if he picks Kaysan Price, he will be learning from one of the best receivers in the league, and that's Julio. Tell me why you like Kaysan Price right here. For the purpose you just said, Julio's getting older. He's got a high cap number. Eventually, Julio's going to be a cap casualty. I think that Falcons defense is already really good. I love your pick with Colbert. I think he'd be a great pick to put a defensive end next to Jarrett. But I look at you're planning for the future. We play a lot of uh, seasons in this league, and I think this receiver is a perfect fit for the Falcons. Uh, he's 6'1", 194. He ran a 4'4'3 at the Combine. He has great catching attributes, and he's 22. You know, the Falcons, they like to pass. They need that extra threat on offense. You know, guys can focus in on Julio. Guys can focus in on uh, Ridley. You got a guy like this. That makes that offense dangerous. I think the Falcons need more points because that defense is already good. So if you can bring Price in there to learn from one of the all-time greats at doing it, the Falcons are going to be set for a long time with their receiving group. Right. I think Julio might take offense to you saying he's getting old. So expect Julio, <laughs> expect Julio to come out this season right here and break all DML records. Um, hey, fellas. That was the rundown of picks 1 through 10 for the DML draft that's coming up Saturday. And I think the draft time is 1 o'clock. So um, I'm sure these collegiate players will be in the green room ready. Um, they will be practicing social distancing, wearing their masks. Um, so, um, yeah, shout out to these guys, man. I'm, I'm very interested to see where they go. And once again, thanks Ray Mache for... Um, coming on the show with me and, and, and giving some insight to the DML draft. And on that note, we will see you next season with another mock draft from the bus and Ray McShay.